President Biden will be touring damage from Hurricane Ida here in southwest Louisiana. 615 now in New Orleans. Police are looking for a man who was reported missing this week. You made a key point there. You told us, as they said, not all 99 pumps available, but available can mean different things. Mm -hmm. Just because they're available, you're saying it doesn't necessarily mean they were turned on. It means there still could be issues, even though all pumps are available, is what you're saying, right? Exactly. Well, 99 pumps were available in May when it flooded in Broadmoor. Video of his arrest quickly surfaced online showing Floyd lose consciousness as an officer sits with his knee on his neck. The race is headed to a runoff between former criminal court judge Kiva Landrum and City Council President Jason Williams. Now, the latest coronavirus case numbers for Louisiana have just come in. Courts will be open, but prepare for some new safety protocols before you go. Louisiana already had laws in place to make abortion illegal once that federal protection was dropped. Can we focus on the Louisiana laws surrounding abortion? As you mentioned, most abortions illegal here unless it is found that the uh, pregnancy is a risk to the woman's life. And then there's the other part of the abortion law, which includes penalties for doctors who perform abortions. What are some of the complications that are going to come with trying to enforce that? Mayor Latoya Cantrell's administration is hoping that access to city bonds will help keep New Orleans afloat during this COVID-19 crisis. Bayou parishes are bracing for impact as Hurricane Ida could make landfall as a Category 4 hurricane. They are expecting to feel the first impacts by tomorrow morning at this time. Our Mike McDaniel is joining us live from home an hour. And Jordan, usually we would tell folks to take a look at the energy outage map. A lot of folks have been saying that the outage map shows that they have power and then when they return to their homes, they don't. So this is why, as you just said, we're telling folks look at those restoration times on our website because that's the most accurate data we have. What are you hearing from kids in our communities who deal with special issues? They're in more violent communities than a lot of communities across the country. A lot of them are dealing with trauma themselves. We just heard from Mayor Cantrell about providing more economic opportunities for them. All things that impact crime. Schools, we just got a New Orleans, uh, of course, a new superintendent of New Orleans schools, all things that lead to crime, edu education, poverty. What do you say to kids in our area dealing with all those issues? You know, I, I met with uh, the new superintendent of schools. There are a number of our young people who are not in school as well. View attendance is down. A 24 hour fundraising campaign is underway in the metro area today. It's Give NOLA Day, where you're asked to donate to local nonprofits. Many people know Dr. Dwight McKenna as the coroner for Orleans Parish and his wife, Beverly Stanton McKenna, for her work with the New Orleans Tribune newspaper. But what you may not know is that the couple has two museums and that they're providing opportunities for black artists and entrepreneurs. In today's You Auto Know segment, we tell you how the McKenna family is preserving culture and investing in the community. Yeah, that was NOFD Chief Roman Nelson giving us an update there. And as Candace said, started in that building, that corner yeah. building, which is 1333 South Saratoga. There's a building right behind it, which he said was only about seven feet away on Thalia Street. Well, so and they, and all those houses in that area are really close. They're very close, so. as you can see there. So they can't tell if the fire started in that building we've been focusing on on the corner of South Saratoga, where firefighters are still working on, or in that building in Thalia, on Thalia right behind it. But he did say that firefighters said at least six people got out safely, yeah. and they are still making sure that no one um, is inside. The university carries his name and legacy, but many people don't know the history of the university's namesake. In today's You Ought to Know segment, we are heading to Dillard University to learn about the man whose name it bears. Several years after the McKenna's founded the art museum, they started a second museum here on Esplanade, and this one is dedicated to preserving the history of free people of color in New Orleans prior to the Civil War. Let's start this conversation talking about Drew Brees, all right, because that's one of the big stories that's come out of this. We've heard so many people sharing their opinions and trying to be vocal. And of course, in an interview, Drew Brees said that he did not agree with anyone protesting the American flag. He got so much backlash. He since apologized. What are your thoughts on all of this? To Drew's defense, his apology is a model of leadership. And you can see why so many guys in the locker room, you know, follow him. And that's because he he came out against the grain and admitted what he was wrong. He admitted that he missed the point. You were behind one of the laws to um, prevent women from getting abortion inducing drugs. Can you kind of take us through these laws? I know since 2006 there have been laws in place in Louisiana that would make abortion illegal once these federal restrictions were dropped, which of course happened today. Kind of take us through what Louisiana law now says about abortion. The George and Leah McKenna Museum of African American Art on Carondelet Street is an impressive showcase of black art. But who are George and Leah McKenna? Well, the simple answer is that they were a university professor and a school teacher and two amazing parents. The most important thing in my life I had nothing to do with. That's who my mother and father were. 
and that's why I named the museum after them. Their son is Orleans Parish Coroner Dr. Dwight McKenna, and his wife is Beverly Stanton McKenna, the editor of the minority-focused newspaper, the New Orleans Tribune. The couple started the museum because of their love of art. So we've been collecting um, since we were newlyweds. By 2003, they had been collecting for nearly three decades, so they opened the museum. And what's impressive is that everything inside is from their private collection. The McKenna's created a space where black people could see themselves reflected in art, and they provided a platform for black artists. Some of uh, the young black artists now have paintings in the Smithsonian and on and on because their first showings were here. And without that, they would have never been started. Several years after the McKenna's founded the Art Museum, they started a second museum here on Esplanade. And this one is dedicated to preserving the history of free people of color in New Orleans prior to the Civil War. The official name is Le Musée DFPC, or the Free People of Color Museum. You know, we have the actual slave irons that slaves used to wear. Uh, we have uh, slave documents. The McKenna's also have a book of real estate records showing that black people owned more than a third of property in the French Quarter from the 1700s to the Civil War. It lets young people know how their ancestors suffered, how they have achieved and how they've overcome so that they understand that you are where you are over the backs of a lot of hardship misuse and abuse. In addition to the two museums, the couple's most recent project is Bayou Road, where they've been buying property since before Katrina and then renting those commercial spaces to black entrepreneurs at affordable rates. But we intentionally set out to save that street to keep a black presence. The McKenna's passion for community comes from their upbringings. We both realized that so we were both reared in households where we knew what we had been blessed with, and we want to open the doors as when and where you enter, you bring somebody else along with you. And that's exactly what the McKenna's are doing, making space for everyone to join them on their journey of preserving culture, creating opportunities, and empowering others.